All right, uh, why don't we get started? Uh, welcome everyone, uh, welcome to our live webinar. This is the second in a series of webinars about uh, Pelican. Last time we looked at uh, some of the challenges in validation. We are doing a little deeper dive here and looking at validations from a slightly different angle. Um, so the focus today would be how do we validate a little smarter, a little faster, a little better, and how do we make this validation process simpler, right? Um, so let's start this off. So the agenda for today is to look at what are the objectives of a validation, right? When Why do you do validations? Uh, we'll look at the life cycle and the strategy. Um, where does validation fit in, in in the data migration or modernization uh, life cycle? Uh, from, from manual to automation, let's look at what's the automation strategy around validation. Uh, we have uh, one uh, use case from one of our recent customer uh, that we'd like to get into. And finally, we'll have about 10, 15 minutes set aside for Q&A, right? So talking about Q&A, um, we do have the, the Q&A option enabled. Uh, so if you navigate to the very bottom right, uh, you should see a little symbol for uh, the activities tab. And within that, you should see uh, Q and A section. So post your questions there. I'll be uh, looking at the questions along with uh, my co-host here, uh, Amit, and we'll be uh, monitoring the Q and A uh, queue as it fills up. And we'll be asking uh, questions, a few of them in between, but uh, we'll leave aside 10, 15 minutes exclusively for questions at the very end. Um, you must have seen some of the gifts that are. Uh, open for your participation registration. So we'll talk a little bit about that in the end, but um, just know that the Q&A is open. The chat option is disabled. Uh, so instead we will be using the Q&A option. All right, uh, I think that's clear. So let's jump straight in. I see people are jumping in, but let's uh, jump straight into this. Um, let me introduce our speakers. Uh, most of you are familiar with Deepak. Deepak Vidani is our uh, co-founder and director. Um, he is been part of the migration and modernization story for over two decades now, and has been part of a uh, lot of large enterprise account uh, modernization programs in different domains. Uh, in addition to uh, other verticals, he's been handling the go-to-market strategy for Pelican and also is looking at uh, new technology incubation. Uh, welcome, Deepak. We also have with us Rohit, Rohit Kolekar. Uh, he's our uh, product manager for the Pelican product. Uh, he brings deep expertise in product development. And in addition to this, he also brings in his expertise in data operations, management, and security. Uh, he's been working very closely with our customer base and uh, uh, the person responsible for bringing in all the features that you see um, in Pelican month or month. Uh, and he'll be uh, one of our key speakers. Rohit, welcome. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, the least, uh, the guest speaker for today is Tiraj Kumar. Uh, he is the Associate Director of the Architecture and Solutions COE. Uh, he brings a lot of expertise in uh, data modernization and data migration. Uh, he's our go-to person for very complex uh, data warehouse uh, questions, anything around SQL, anything around you know how to do something uh, in analytics, he's the person to, uh, to go. Um, brings a lot of experience in, in uh, client delivery, and uh, he leads the solutioning for uh, for the complex uh, problems that we come into, right? Um, welcome, Deeraj. Uh, I'm Binay Samuel. I lead the engineering for the Pelican product, um, and I'll be your moderator for today. Um, we'll have the speakers do most of the talking, but uh, you know the questions and bring it uh, at the right time to the uh, speakers. That will be what uh, my job is. Along with me, I have Amit. Uh, some of you must have already met him. He's our customer success manager, and he's a good person when you have any more questions about or how to do something with Pelican. Uh, he would be uh, manning the Q&A section and he would be asking questions as they come along. Uh, so with that said, uh, let's move to the, the core of the webinar. 
and uh, I'll call upon uh, Deepak to give us a little background about the company, what we do, and jump into setting up a context of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Deepak, uh, Deepak, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benoy. Thank you for setting up this. And thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar. As Benoy mentioned, this is the second of a series of a webinar we'll be doing. The whole idea is to focus on uh, the modernization. How do we bring a fresh paradigm to this modernization? How do we bring technology solutions and a very unique way of solving this uh, critical problem? Uh, so we are onyx uh, into the space of technology for more than 30 years, uh, 20 years with Google as a premium partner, and then more than 1,400 happy customers. Uh, Datamatica, uh, we have a niche in modernizing legacy workloads and taking it to cloud modern platforms. Uh, we do it better, faster, cheaper, and with less risk because we have created technologies and matured them over the last uh, 10 years. Now, good news, Onyx and Datamatica has come together. What it means is now, are able to provide an end-to-end -end offering for the customer by leveraging the data engineering muscle of uh, Datamatica backed by our IPs and the deep expertise of Onyx into AI, Gen AI, and consulting. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, great. So let's get into the topic uh, for webinar today. So guys, we are in the middle of a huge cloud modernization wave. Everybody wants to move their assets, specifically data to these big uh, hyperscalers. Now these are driven both by business as well as uh, by the IT teams. Now business uh, wants to accelerate their go-to-market. As a business, we want to deploy the products more rapidly. The go-to-market window is you know, continuously shrinking. I also, as a business, you know, want to build my strategies on multiple data. So I don't just want to unilaterally use my enterprise data and create my strategy. I want to use data from my partners. I want to use data from my competition. I want to use public data, you know, marry all the data, create a golden record, create a gold mine, and then build my offerings, build my strategy on top of this. The other big motivation you know, for business uh, is, if you look at uh, the recent history, all the major innovation in data, AI, generating AI space is led by these big hyperscalers. And as a business, I want to really leverage that. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to leverage these platforms and then create something which is very, very specific mm -hmm to my use case, to my customers. Similar to business, you know, IT has also big motivation uh, to go to cloud. Uh, you know, as an IT team, we are under continuous pressure to reduce our cost continuously, right? So rather than buying these expensive license and then end up using only 5% of the feature, I would want to get into a model where I'm, <laughs> I, pay for what I use. Uh, as an IT team, we are uh, you know, in a perpetual upgrade cycle. So we are upgrading OS, we are upgrading databases, we are upgrading uh, other IT assets all the time. Do we want to do that? Maybe not. We may want to give all this to the expert and then focus on building frameworks with a, which are custom to my use case, custom to my business. One other big challenge, uh, you know, we face as an IT team is we keep getting bombarded uh, by business uh, to create new pipelines. So, you know, suddenly there is one new KPI which business wants to track, so IT now has to create pipelines so as to feed those KPIs <laughs> in addition. We are asked to, you know, enhance the existing pipeline. If there are bugs, fix them, uh, you know, and specified SLAs, manage these pipeline and all. 
at a core enterprise IT team, maybe you know our focus has to be to create the enterprise data bank backbone. You know, acquire the data, do the cleansing, uh, ensure that the data is of right quality, and once these platform and data is created, democratize this data, this technology platform to the business team so that they can use it and create specific product offerings for their business line. Now, all these things are, uh, you know, huge requirement coming from business and IT, and all this be done only when we are able to move our assets, both technology as well as data, to cloud. Only then we'll be able to collaborate. <coughs> well, having said that, this is a massive undertaking. And this can be only achieved successfully when you have a very crisp strategy and the right partner to do it. In today's uh, webinar, we will be focusing on a particular phase of this ent entire organization, which is the data validation. We want to focus on why it is so very important to give confidence to the business that these new platforms are ready to be consumed. We also want to you know, really question whether the classical way of doing validation is the right thing to do. We believe that it is not a sustainable practice, and we want to demonstrate how, as Onyx Datamatica, we have solved this problem, and how we have brought a fresh paradigm to this data validation space. Yeah, over to you, Benoit. All right. Um, thank you, Deepak. This was uh, th this sets a very good context on what we are doing and why we want to do it. Um, and uh, this, yeah, we're doing modernization, we are doing migration, but why is a big question. And thank you for answering that. I would imagine with the progress that we have made in AI in the in the last eighteen months or so, we'll see more and more of this uh, this migration requirement. So if previously, if you thought that you wanted to do it. Now you have to do it. There's no other way than to move into cloud and make use of you know the best things that are uh, that are there for you to achieve your business goals. Uh, with that said, um, I'd like to uh, move the focus to validation. Let's deep, uh, dig a little deeper into validation, where it comes, why it comes. You know, so uh, Dheeraj, if you can address data validation uh, and talk a little bit more about uh, what what we are looking at here today. Yeah, thanks, Dina. So yeah, so guys, uh, thank you uh, for joining. Uh, so if you are talking about the migration, it means not only to the data migrations. We are trying to cover the pipeline migrations, like uh, ETA pipeline, their data warehouse things. Okay, then also orchestration tool also. So data migrations along with the ETA warehouse and the orchestration layer. These all are four component when we are discussing the migration. It's not only the data migration. How to solve or expedite this particular process, we have uh, uh, factors, these all uh, 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 key factors to make it success. The first is the discovery analysis. So to get inside of the legacy systems, so discovery analysis is a very important phase, okay, to get all the patterns, complexity, uh, data generality, uh, uh, scope, uh, uh, leakage of the jobs, data lineage, column lineage, that will help me to better design, that will help me to uh, in a development also. So discovery analysis uh, is a very important phase where we do the assessment to identify all the different complexity patterns, lineage, orchestration, uh, uh, data, uh, uh, pseudo frequency, and all these things. Then that will help you in a, a, a development, okay? And we can track accordingly, okay? So where we are uh, in terms of the uh, project planning also, okay? So based on the uh, assessment, we can at least do because we are going to discuss enterprise warehouse migrations means all the things ETL, ETL as well as the warehouse. So it is very important. It is not possible to do migrations in a one phase. We'll have to at least uh, keep uh, make it plan in such a way. So that we can basically deliver in a pieces and business users can consume that information uh, for their uh, uh, users. So, uh, so development will have to at least uh, plan accordingly how to develop or deliver. 
then the very important thing is the testing part okay in a testing we have to as i discussed it's not law only the migration we have to manage all the pipeline injection transformation load so there are lots of things we are going to uh, change it's not like the edges migrations if we, even if you are doing the edges migrations there are so many things we have to at least uh, uh, during the migrations we have to change like uh, if we are going to change the platforms legacy systems database architecture the work differently like in a uh, in a cloud solution the data data architect data architecture and then the platform and technology we are going to change to manage all these things over the cloud there are minimal changes is required and it may uh, through our code also it may we need to change the data model to support all these things those are not properly mapped from the uh, traditional warehouse to the cloud platforms so for that we 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 do some tweak to uh, to achieve all these things even the direct mapping is not available like the if data type may be not managed uh, like by the traditional warehouse data or netija the way data or netija works it may be uh, some minor uh, tweak needs to be done to uh, to get get it uh, keep the same grains of the data for to manage all these things we need to do some uh, uh, changes in the code changes in the data model even we are doing edge uh, migration so somehow modernization comes in a picture either we have to modernize to get the uh, better performance or scale up the systems so in a integrate testing we have to perform the testing development environment sit as well as the uat so lots of effort at least need to uh, 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 do the testing and it is very difficult to test the data from legacy systems and in the cloud platforms we have to build a pipeline so what the way etl pipeline is working or data warehouse things is working in a traditional over the traditional warehouse we have to we have to manage same way the output will remain same even business logic we are not going to change but to manage the things uh, whatever the changes is required to uh, uh, when we are going to change the platforms we are going to change the technology so to get all the things we need a very very uh, uh, deep dive to how to do the validation what what all uh, strategy we have to at least uh, uh, map to validate the things so once we we do the validation then historical data migration is very important along with the incremental pipeline and then the data consumption so historical data migration it means we are going to a uh, large volume of the data having the petabyte of the terabyte data in a legacy warehouse how to migrate it it is not possible to just migrate in a one go it may be to at least the, uh, do the uh, apply the some strategy how we can uh, migrate uh, having 5000 more than 5000 tables there are so many uh, data lake how to migrate those things so and if a table is having more columns uh, more than 100 columns it is very difficult to uh, migrate and the page and yes we can use our technology and the tools to migrate data from the legacy to cloud platforms but still because as i said it is not possible to do migrations in a one go there are small chunks need to be at least split in a small chunk and then we have to migrate and there may be the some custom tool required to migrate the data from on premises to the Uh, cloud platforms where were any 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 uh, additional hops added like the any additional uh, is some custom tool so definitely we have to validate the data and as i said my possible the data type is not matching as it so how to at least uh, make it possible whatever the data grains stored in a, a, a traditional warehouse that should not uh, mismatch when we migrate the data in a, a cloud platforms so first we have to focus because historical data is very important for analytics and uh, any uh, uh, data science uh, uh, use case so first of all we have to validate all the historical data we know there are so many uh, columns in a table okay for the large uh, to support the large enterprise warehouse so even i have uh, experienced a particular table having more than 20 terabyte data so how to do that so even we are able to do that to migrate the data we have to make sure the business user will not will not impact we have to keep the same grains of the data the data output should remain same in our traditional as well as the cloud of warehouse yeah and and that is a very good point uh, dheeraj you know definitely relate to it so see and understand that we are not moving from a small teradata yeah. to a bigger teradata right so we are not 
uh, moving to the various versions. We are mo moving a legacy platform which may have been built over you know two or three decades, banded over and yeah. over again. New data architectural guideline, you know, new development practice, so on so forth. And then we are moving to something which is maybe a decade or you know around 15 years old. So these are very different platforms. So the incompatibilities are expected. You know, data types are different. <coughs> so the way they handle the data uh, are very very different. So when you are moving data, uh, and we are talking about uh, you know in in one of the retail use cases, the price location table. Uh, was running into you know tens of terabytes. So uh, SKU price location, uh, moving this kind of a data and then matching it with the live system. So these are some amazing challenges, and you know it becomes very difficult if you try to solve this in a very classical way. Right. And yes. Yeah, so so uh, and along with the historical data, as I said, uh, we are going to uh, migrate the UGL pipe deck, PLD that. Uh, is implemented in the uh, traditional warehouse. We have to also migrate in the cloud platforms. So we have to build the incremental pipeline. We have to redesign the injection. We have to redesign the transformations logic. We are not going to just host that ETL to uh, from uh, on premises to the cloud platforms. We are going to redesign the things so that we can get the better performance and scale the uh, system. So in an ETL pipeline, there are so many steps. Injection. We have to extract data from. Uh, uh, ONTP systems, source systems, and load into the uh, uh, data lake in a cloud person and do some massaging, do some transformations, and uh, uh, take, uh, uh, transform data to use of in a business sense, okay, in a, a trusted layer. And after that, we have to also prepare uh, some summarize data, roll of data in a uh, data consumption layer where business user can directly uh, 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 utilize those data for the, any uh, business decision or analytics. So, Dheeraj, can you talk a little in depth about, you know, like uh, the historical and uh, the incremental, like uh, you talk here about uh, the access migration. What do you mean by access migration? Uh, like we're just talking about moving data from one place to another, right? How is it different? Like where, where are the challenges? Can we get a little uh, more insight into that? Yes, sure. So when we uh, 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 talk about the edges migration, so yes, so data model remains same, the columns, data types definitely will remain same. But due to the limitation of the uh, cloud platforms, the data type may ex not exactly match uh, mm -hmm. from a traditional warehouse. And I can give one classical example. Uh, I am just uh, referring one data warehouse, uh, Terra Data has its own own uh, 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 ben, uh, features, okay, like uh, there is a set table or multi set table. Even the data types on columns, we are going to keep as is in a GCP or any uh, cloud platforms, uh, okay. So the feature of the Terra data set table is storing only the uh, uh, unique records. It can't store the duplicate records. It's, it's by a feature, okay. Even if you are keeping the same uh, uh, schema in a uh, cloud platforms. If you are going to insert the data, it will insert duplicate. But by de by default, if if you are going to if you are using the step tables in a Terra data, it will not store the duplicate records. So such kind of things we need to consider when do the migration. If someone is at least executed uh, two types of the historical uh, data uh, copy from a uh, legacy system to the target, we have to make sure that will not store the duplicate records. So that kind of the challenges we faced in our uh, journey. Okay having uh, so many use cases we have solved. So data types, data format, default uh, uh, time zone setting, that will at least, uh, uh, these all are important points when we do the historical lessons so that the business, the data guess will remain same. Okay, in incremental also, as I said, yes, we are doing the edges or sometimes we are uh, we are getting a uh, uh, modernization. Okay, up to what level we have to modernize, even if we are doing the edge, we need to tweak something. Like uh, uh, we are going to change the, storage, we are going to change the uh, platforms or technology also. Uh, like the injections earlier, it was uh, used uh, ETL warehouse, ETL, uh, traditional ETL, like the, any tools you can refer, Informatica data, stage, Abinitio, uh, SSIS. We have to build the same logic in a cloud platforms, okay? We are not going to change, e e copy and so there was the any changes you required, redesign is required. Definitely we have to make sure the outcome should remain safe. 
okay in a transformation also i uh, in a, uh, a transformation so like uh, i have uh, uh, one use case again uh, uh, highlight here in a traditional warehouse the data is stored uh, all the pair data is stored in a plain text manner but they if, if we are going to uh, uh, move from traditional to cloud platforms they want to encrypt the data for the security here. they don't want to access keep the plain text data so yes so the so the data format we are going to change because in a traditional warehouse we are storing plain text data here we are trying to store the encrypted data hmm. okay we have a we have a, a solution to decrypt the data but yes there are two different uh, kind of uh, data in our legacy systems and having a cloud platform how to validate those things and it is not easy in an incremental pipeline like the, if you are going to validate the day by data okay even i have experience like the for a particular date the data congestion is happening for more than uh, 200 GB or 100 plus GB. Okay, so it is very difficult to validate uh, a record or the column-wise uh, value when we are doing the in, run the incremental pipeline from source extract and look into the staging layer, do some transformation, so look up and all these things, then prepare the trusted layer. On top of that, we have to prepare the consumption server also. So there were any changes required, we need to validate. We have to make sure so that we there, is, there should be no any risk about the data quality. So customers can get the appropriate data for their analytics or whatever the uh, uh, business user is, uh, is using that particular data for any purpose. Yeah. Data consumption is also a very important yeah, point. Ma'am, I want to also bring in one important point, Jira you know, These are very, very relevant examples when you are running this huge modernization. And then you will get it all the time, right? So since we are moving to a net new technology platform, there are just too many challenges uh, in this modernization journey. Data, uh, you know, security, as you mentioned, that uh, every customer when doing this, uh, you know, massive undertaking, they want to use and this opportunity to also bring up some new data architectural guidelines. Yes, I may have date today in my warehouse, but I want to bring the notion of timestamp. Uh, you know, I may want to have a new audit mechanism, uh, right? I may want to introduce a new KPI, maybe, uh, you know, in the warehouse. So all those things, uh, uh, and then uh, people may get overexcited uh, that I want to do, you know, n number of things while doing this modernization journey what we have learned doing this for more than a decade now is try to give these modernization simple uh, that helps the validation try to keep the data model similar if not same uh, because we are talking about you know tens of thousands of data sets tables and views in cases these run into hundreds of thousands of you know tables and views and these tables are, you know, thousands of columns. Uh, so the moment you start uh, you know, tickering with the data model, uh, you are exponentially in a non-linear fashion, increasing the complexity. So with all this uh, challenge, you know, how we can uh, maybe you know, have a phased approach to modernization. So try to get to the new platform, uh, adopt the new technology, Keep the data model similar, and then as a phase two, <coughs> you know, try to uh, tweak the data model to get even better uh, throughput uh, and efficiency from the new platform. So that's something which we have learned by doing uh, so many large scale uh, because the moment you start taking a lot of challenges, it becomes a never ending uh, <laughs> effort. So yeah, so that's. I want to add. I think that's a that's a that's a good segue. And and uh, in fact, um, when I look at this slide, uh, it it touches on different like four different very uh, vast points, right? So one side you have your data ingestion, one side you have your data consumption, right? And then in between you have uh, your data that needs to move from one platform to another, and at the same time the data transformation, right? So uh, your code needs to move, your script needs to change. So essentially, you're rewiring your whole pipeline. Anything and everything could change, but at the end of the day, right, your consumption layer has to look exactly the same as the old one, right? I was talking to a customer recently where they are, you know, changing from like Oracle and DB2 and coming to uh, one 
uh, like a GCP platform and they're like, you know, trying to reduce all that tech stack and coming to cloud. And they want to do everything, you know, twice as fast at, at half the cost, right? But at mm -hmm. the same time, you can't have a single line of my, you know, my sales data be wrong, right? You, you'll have the salespeople come asking for the commission. So I can't have a single row of data wrong. It has to be exactly the same. So my data has to be exactly the same, but everything else has changed. Right? So <laughs> that's, that's uh, the slide captures it. Uh, like, uh, like I couldn't have said this better, but um, I think this is a good segue. Let's dip, dig a little deeper, right? Now we're coming into the validation part of it. Uh, we all understand we need to validate that everything has happened well. Uh, one way to do it is to make sure that look at the result and look at the things that matter. Look at the data that's gone through the pipeline and ensure that yes, what I'm getting now in this new pipeline is exactly the same as what I got uh, before. So uh, with that, uh, Rohit, if you can take it away, talk us through, you know, how how would somebody go through this like petabytes of data? How would they make sure that everything is good? Um, I had no technology. What was I doing in the past? How would I do it uh, with all this automation and all this magic? How would you do it in the future? How can we make it you know, foolproof for our customers? Hey, thanks, Bunai. Thanks, Dheeraj and Deepak for setting your context. Uh, so what I will talk about for a couple of slides is what mistakes most of the companies make, uh, what is our recommendation, and then how do we do uh, validation for our customers. So starting with uh, what mistakes the company makes. So as soon as the validation starts, the usual approach uh, is to uh, stand up uh, army of QAs and then start validating the data manually with some augmentation of automation here and there. Uh, I think what companies will very quickly realize is they are no longer dealing with uh, a similar kind of data, so they are dealing with a variety of data. Uh, they are dealing with different data types, uh, different sizes of data. Uh, they are no longer dealing with GBs of data. Now the data is terabytes, petabytes. Uh, we are no longer in a situation where data is getting loaded on a nightly basis uh, in batches, whereas we are in a world where data is real time. It is stream, uh, streaming data, ad hoc data. So very quickly they will uh, understand that they are running into some challenges. And, and what are those challenges? So basically they will find that their QA engineers are spending a huge amount of time in writing test cases, in executing those test cases, capturing the test evidences, which is a very time consuming and costly affair. Uh, they will also find that their QA engineers are copying data from one platform to another only for validation purpose. This is going to choke their network bandwidth. Uh, as the time becomes uh, a constraint factor, they are going to just do sampling of uh, data for validation, so that is going to lower the confidence. And the most uh, important area that the company is exposing itself uh, by uh, introducing the human touch is the compliance portion. So, because as, as soon as uh, people start working with data, you don't know how people are going to handle that data, how they are going to use that data. So company will start exposing themselves to data privacy, data compliance, data loss issues. So, and what happens is uh, the, the project will start, the company will realize all these issues six, six months down the road, so the time has invested, a lot of money has gone, the business is not ready to use the new platform because they are not confident. So everything is lost. So, and, and this is the mistake that most of the companies make. And what we have seen working is, the only solution to this is doing 100% automated data validation from day one. That is something has worked for us, has worked for our customers, and that's what we, we want to also um, share with all of you. Uh, so uh, in Datamatica, the way we have addressed this is we have created our own IP, which is a 100% automated solution. And we have been using that for successful validation over the last one decade. And, and what is that IP? Is, is our product, which is called Pelican. So it's a validation product. It's a product that's used for 
validating data between heterogeneous platform at petabyte scale, and we are able to validate at cell level using this product. Now, uh, Deepak and Deeraj uh, talked about uh, the different challenges and the different areas that we need to focus. What we have done is we have taken those challenges and converted them as features of the product. So you will see that whatever challenges we spoke about, we are able to handle those as features of our product. Um, so you will see that we are able to, so we have a built-in AI engine which is able to handle the different data types, the different changes in the format of the data, and, and, and all is done automatically. Nothing is manual intervention. Okay. Uh, we have a robust framework where we are able to compare plain data from your enterprise data warehouse with your encrypted data from your cloud platform. That's done seamlessly. We understand that uh, we cannot put load on the system just for validation. So we have ensured that our product is uh, performant. We are using partition, indexing, clustering, different keys to make sure that we are able to control the scope of validation. Uh, now this product is definitely used for SIT, UIT production validation, but one very strong use of this product is also during the development cycle. So the testers can use this product for regression testing and make sure that the errors are captured at the source and not propagated through the NDLC cycle, which is a very critical feature of the product. Uh, Dheeraj talked about uh, the data consumption layer validation. So we do have features where we can validate BI report data. Uh, you can upload CSV, Parquet files to the tool, and we can validate those downstream files for you. So that is a feature. Last but not the least uh, is the orchestration. So, so what we have done today is we have pivoted from table validation to pipeline validation. So we provide an option in the tool where you can mimic your pipeline inside the tool and do the validation for the pipeline in a single go. We also expose APIs for this tool. So if you want to do more complex orchestration with enterprise schedulers like control app, Tidal, uh, you can also do that. This gives you a very powerful tool to do your data validation uh, automatically, which gives peace of mind and confidence to your business. So they will start utilizing your new platform as soon as you are done with your project. So, so Rohit, uh, just before you move on to the next one, um, just wanted to point out, um, like the Q&A section is accessible from the very bottom right activate section. If you click on that point, you should be able to see a Q&A uh, forum. Um, the chat is disabled, or you had to use the Q&A section for. Uh, for asking a question. So we are uh, looking at our email and uh, the Q&A section. So anything, any uh, any questions you have for Rohit or Dheeraj or uh, Deepak um, at any point, uh, feel free to type it in and uh, we'll keep monitoring that. Uh, sorry, sorry, Rohit, uh, for interrupting, but uh, back to you. Thanks, Bharat. I mean, I just want to highlight before you go to the next slide, uh, so these are some of the critical aspects of any uh, validation, right? One of the key feature of Pelican, uh, which is our IP is we are able to do all this without moving data over the network. What it means is I am able to look at heterogeneous systems. So I am able to look at an Oracle and a BigQuery. I am able to look at a Teradata and a Delta, I am able to look at uh, Netiza and a Synapse, I am able to look at a SQL Server and a Redshift, and I am able to match them. I am able to you know, tell you that 10,000 tables in Teradata are matching with the 10,000 tables in BigQuery, or maybe five tables are not matching, or within that five table, uh, you know, out of 800 columns, there are four columns which are not matching. I am able to you know, get into that level, and I'm able to do that without moving data over the network. So please understand that here we are talking about massive modernization. So we are talking about legacy platforms 
which are hosting enterprise warehouses running into petabytes of data if we start moving data from one system to other and do a minus between data sets you know the classical way of doing our qa right we will all relate to that uh, write a sql which say minus table a from abel uh, table b if there are this much record then raise up to developer and you know the traditional cycle of <coughs> fixing the bar cutting this again so <laughs> you can do that for 10 tables you can do that for a greenfield use case but we're talking about you know, half a million data sets you cannot there is not a sustainable way it will choke your network you know your ciso team Uh, will come into play they will start asking uh, you questions around you know data privacy moving data across so we created uh, this ip uh, with a pull down architecture which means that all this what you are seeing in your screen is done with data remaining local at the point and, and this is something which uh, <laughs> which differentiate pelican from the rest of the technologies in the world yeah exactly uh so now now what next we are going to see is is a particular use case of pelican so we have so many uh, successful uh, business cases but we decided to take a case which is live which has been done recently and that will give you a flavor of migration as well as usage of pelican in operation scenario uh so this is the use case for cisco cisco is one of our big customers we are working very closely with them Uh, over last couple of years um and and we always try on positive feedback from our customers and what better way than getting to know that pelican has become the lifeline of their operation teams within cisco uh so to just give you a brief background uh, cisco has decided to use gcp as their preferred platform uh, they had approved uh, they had uh, gone for a phase migration so what that means is for a period of time are going to have data which is same in their enterprise data warehouse and sql they are going to use this data from both the platform for their, their business decisions so their product statement was how do i make sure that my data on both the platform is same on on a daily basis so that is the problem statement that they came up with obviously they had challenges like uh, they wanted to finish the project in certain time there were resource constraints as we concluded being a security company they, they were not okay with moving data for validation and obviously they were looking for scalability now they are using pelican for last one year how their validation looks today is basically they are using uh, pelican for reconciliation between their enterprise data warehouse and bigquery on a daily basis they are running thousand plus jobs we they are able to reconcile and make sure that the data is landing same for those tables in uh, edw and bigquery the adoption is amazing uh, around 1000 plus users across their different teams are using this solution and the feature that they like to call us is hero feature of pelican what they like the most is able to see cell level validation of your data pipeline in a single interaction and and that's the most liked feature that that we always hear from the call it as the pure feature of pelic uh we also have some testimonials from from their top management uh, which i'm going to show now uh, so we have uh, some good words from virendra singh who is the director of their data and analytics platform and harish whose team is using this tool day in and day out and and you will see how happy they are uh, using this across their teams for uh, thousands and thousands of jobs on a daily basis you will find these uh, detailed reviews on g2.com so please do visit us see our product reviews product product ratings uh, i think with that i have covered my portion uh, binoy i am going to hand it over to you while you get ready for q and a i will just play a quick video which is going to show the features of pelican and then you can get into q and a thank you rohit and i think uh, just to mention going back to your our discussion with uh, harish and viren a uh, couple of months back at cisco um i think one thing that i remember them mentioning was uh, when when they had an internal review with their users and they asked hey 
you know how is pelican uh, are you making use of it and i think uh, some of the users have said that no we we definitely love it we are definitely using it and we can't live without it we don't know how we did it before that right and uh, so i think it, it, it's a pretty good testimonial um also the fact that uh, you know we have thousands of users or they have thousands of tasks running at any time just imagining the the project management scale of you know like who did what when and uh, add to that you know having to maintain uh, the the workspaces or project spaces uh, and uh, having security and compliance all built into the tool um, i think it's in the cisco has been a great uh, customer and uh, we do have you know continuous feedback from them in terms of features they like don't like new things that they like um, so i'll keep on blabbering but yeah let's see this uh, video or uh, rohit please go ahead Welcome to Pelican, AI-powered data validation product. In this quick video, we will highlight Pelican's key features and their role in simplifying data validation. Pelican's standout features offer petabyte scale validation at the cell level without any coding and data movement. These features will help you accurately validate data with confidence, security, agility, and peace of mind. Let's see how. With Pelican's mapping engine, you can auto-discover tables and save time writing complex test cases. You can shift to pipeline validation with group scheduling and lineage powered error triaging. Save time capturing test evidences with Pelican's canned reports, dashboards, samples and integration with work management tools like Jira. The power of Pelican enables you with precise cell level mismatches and even validate against an acceptable data error threshold using a variety of samples. Its data profiling feature gives a comprehensive view of data and metadata quality in terms of completeness and uniqueness. In fact, Pelican goes beyond table validation and provides a feature to validate BI report data accurately. All in all, Pelican significantly transforms your data validation culture. Its enterprise-ready features allow you to quickly deploy the product and start utilizing it without the need of comprehensive training. And that's how you simplify data validation with Pelican and transform with confidence. Try Pelican today and experience the difference. Thank you, Rohit. I think that was a very quick uh, look at the product. Um, I'm sure you have a lot of questions or you want to see more of uh, what Pelican can do. Um, our, our lines are open. So if you have questions, uh, please uh forward forward that uh, type it into the q a uh, section in the activities so i think we have a few questions i'm going to uh, ask amit to ask some of the questions that we received previously um through email and, and such um amit what do you see sure. do you have any questions that uh, you want to bring up here yeah uh so first of all i would like to thank deepa deeraj and rohit for pretty much summarizing the and setting the context of uh, modernizing the data warehouses. Thanks to Pinoy. Uh, so moving ahead with the questions that we have for today. Uh, so the first question coming uh, via email is like, how does no data movement benefit the customer? So maybe if uh, you would like to add a few thoughts, uh, I think, yeah. 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 So and I uh, thank you, Amit. Uh, so I did, uh, you know, touch upon that. So uh, you know, in a classical world or in any greenfield uh, use case, we are talking about uh, maybe you know building a pipeline to serve a particular KPI, and that may involve say ten tables as a source. Then I use the data from ten tables to some curation cleansing. Uh, create a couple of tables in the curated layer and then maybe a couple of summary tables uh, which can then feed your uh, BI layer. Uh, it's pretty much uh, 10, 20 tables and all. Now, all these, when we are talking about this volume, uh, you know, you can stand up a QAT which can write the test cases pretty much in SQL, uh, you know, manage them in Excel or some repository. Move the data across system, assuming that this is a teradata to BigQuery. Move that uh, say, to BigQuery or move everything to teradata, and write some minus queries. Right, so that that's okay. We are talking about a few GBs or tens of GBs of data. 
But this is a very different use case, right? We are talking about uh, you know modernizing something which is built for two or three decades, right? So the enterprise warehouse, so the entire enterprise data in a warehouse, right? We are talking about in some of the cases we have seen hundreds of thousands of uh, data sets in the form of tables and views. Now, if I follow the classical method of writing these minus SQLs, move data from Teradata to BigQuery or Matiza to Synapse or Oracle to Delta, uh, uh, you know, what I'm doing is I'm moving petabyte scale data over the network and I have to do that iteratively. Right? It is not just one time a movement because there is a live production pipeline and I need to keep doing that. And this is not sustainable. It will choke your network. Uh, you know, this system is not just for validation. There are uh, other uh, ad hoc users or other uh, you know, system user utilizing the system. So you cannot choke the system. You cannot choke the network by moving such huge scale of data. So it's very, very important that for such massive undertaking, you create products which keep the data local. Uh, it saves your network. The other thing is the, the moment you start having a strategy wherein you need to move data, then you will have to you know, augment your validation strategy with all the guardrails of what do I do with the columns which are sensitive. Right, I can move everything else, but not columns which are sensitive. So then you end up, uh, you know, creating those uh, artifacts wherein you say that 800 columns in the table, five are uh, sensitive. I can move rest, but for this five, I need to figure out something. So, so when we're talking about ten tables, maybe I can start creating uh, these strategies. But when I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of tables, I cannot really I can choose that this moves, this doesn't move. Right. This is just one example. There may be so many. So I need to create a platform which is scalable, uh, and that's what we kept in mind when we designed uh, Pelican. And uh, one of the design principles was that everything will remain local. There will be <clears throat> no movement over that network, so no pressure on the network, uh, not getting caught in uh, the security lens, uh, no problem with compliance and all. So yeah, so that is a very, very key uh, design decision in any uh, validation strategy. So I can just uh, imagine that if you're not moving data, or if you're moving data, right, when you're talking about moving terabytes of data, there's of course a network cost. Uh, you now of course, uh, you know, our network providers will be very happy that so much data is moving and they are getting money for that. But just imagine the time it takes to move you know, a few terabytes of data or a few petabytes of data. And when we are looking at data that needs to be, you know, validated multiple times uh, over multiple days, we are moving that same terabyte and petabyte of data multiple times. And then just the time it takes, just the physics of that, regardless of if there is no other users and if you have the biggest network uh, pipe. Uh, but I had a, fo a follow-up question, I'm sure some of our uh, our users are interested in knowing, right? That if you're not moving any data, how are you? How are you showing results at the cell level? How are you comparing at a cell level? Uh, I know that's part of our IP, but if you can kind of very uh, at a high level talk about that, I'm, I'm sure people are interested in knowing that. Okay, how are you doing this magic that you know, you're not moving data, but you you surely are not opening two laptops and and keeping them side by side. And seeing if you know it's the same data on both sides. Right, that's that's a very good uh, question. And again, you know that's our IP, right? So, but you know, at a high level, what we do is <coughs> we create hashes on both the sides, and then we uh, you know store them in a data structure, something like a tree uh, in both the sides, and then we navigate the tree up and down. We keep traversing these trees in a very accelerated fashion, but you know everything remains uh, locally. So this. Hashes also remain uh, local, and by traversing these nodes, we get to know, you know, what node is not matching, and only when they are not matching, you know, we would bring some samples uh, to the Pelican in order to show that on the UI. So that's the only thing which 
comes uh, to the UI, and then we can always, uh, you know, activate or disable all these. Uh, now, you know, creating hashes, anybody can do that. You know, you can write something uh, quickly to create, uh, you know, SHA one or <laughs> uh, any kind of hashes. The IP what we have built is how can I use this hashes, fold this, and then. Uh, Traverse in the accelerator version. How can I validate, you know, terabytes of data in minutes? Uh, and for that, I very creatively use these hashes, fold them, and you know, traverse this. Uh, and that's our IP. Great. Thanks, Deepak. Uh, the next question that we have from the audience is like, what strategies can we implement? to mitigate potential performance bottlenecks during the validation of massive data sets in Pelican and any limitations around it? Yeah, yeah great question, sir, again. Uh, so, uh, Amit, uh, you know, this is what we have realized uh, over the period of time. And Pelican is used uh, by our delivery teams uh, and also by uh, various customers. Uh, and then there are various strategies to solve uh, this performance issue. So yes, uh, uh, we have created some highly tuned SQL which goes uh, uh, to the databases. For example, Terraita and BigQuery, and then they create hashes and do uh, what they need to do. Uh, but they will create some uh, load on this. So the way uh, customers have used this, is they would create a dedicated Pelican account uh, for uh, their system, and they would limit that by quota. For example. You know, uh, during my active uh, period, uh, I may only give five percent of uh, my cost power to a Pelican, and during uh, you know the non-active period, I may end up bumping it to twenty-five percent. So that's uh, something we have uh, seen uh, customers using a lot. Uh, Pelican also supports uh, pruning, so you can prune the data set both horizontally and vertically. What it means is, suppose I have 800 column, uh, but I may want to validate only 50 of them. Uh, you know, rest are descriptions or whatever. So Pelican have an ability to validate only those. Similarly, uh, you know, we can have a strategy wherein the entire one terabyte table is validated once a week. And for you know, everyday validation, we look at only the incremental portion of it. So mm -hmm. Pelican support the incremental validation also. So all those <coughs> are strategies we can use uh, to increase uh, the performance. And we'll be glad to you know, get into a deep dive demos uh, of Pelican uh, to answer follow-up questions. OK. And uh, so Amit, I'm just going to you know just say that we're coming to the top of the hour, and one of my tasks here is to be the, the timekeeper too. Uh, so let's take one more question. Uh, we have a bunch of questions on the Q and and I, I know you have some from the email, but uh, can we take one more? Yeah, I think uh, I think there, there is an interesting question on that, right? Uh, so what what is the quantifiable benefit that Pelican can deliver, right? Does it help with data quality in data warehouses, like finding extra records or resolving transformation logic logical errors? Oh, absolutely. So there are a couple of questions in this one question, right? So one, what is the quantifiable uh, benefits? <laughs> so absolutely. So rather than you know standing up a QA army, and uh, we see uh, that in massive project there are um, you know 30, 40 QAs when we are talking about a huge migration. Uh, so you reduce that substantially. Uh, we are not saying that you will eliminate uh, the QA army completely, uh, but you will reduce that to say. You know, less than five percent of what you would <laughs> really create for uh, a massive modernization. So that uh, translate into dollars saved. So that's the uh, benefit. And then other benefits of uh, you know not choking the network, not moving the data, uh, taking care of uh, the compliance guidelines that uh, in production nobody can uh, look at or touch uh, data. So all those things. But from the <laughs> dollar saving perspective that is uh one and and uh, there was one more question in this what was the second part uh does it help with data quality in data warehouse like finding extra records or resolving transformation logical errors oh absolutely absolutely so uh pelican 
addition to the data validation layer, there is a rule engine on top of uh, the validation layer. So it gives you ability to put your lightweight ETLs uh, in order to, uh, to have you know, custom rules fitted in. Uh, it also takes care of the quality. So it, uh, in addition to finding mismatch, it also tells you that these are the extra records or these are the records which are missing uh, from uh, the source system. So all those uh, are supported by Pelican. Great, great. So I think uh, having a look at the clock, I think we are two minutes over time, but I think we have a couple of them. So I think we make sure that we respond back to them over the email yeah. and all the questions get answered, right? So with that in mind, I would like to hand it over to Binoy. Uh, yeah, thank you, Binoy. Thank you, Amit. Um, so with this, we are coming to the end of this uh, webinar. Um, um, please feel free to keep sending your questions. So uh, we'll be still on for, for a couple of minutes more. But uh, the last slide uh, shows the email. Uh, so do send all your questions uh, to us at sales.pelican.datamatica.com. Uh, we'll be sure to respond to you right away. Uh, I know we couldn't get to a couple of questions from Akshay and a couple of other folks. Uh, we will reach out to you with the responses. Um, also, we had uh, a, a raffle going on for uh, for the participation, and we'll be reaching back to you uh, over email uh, with the with the prices for that. Uh, thank you, uh, Deepak. Thank you, Deeraj and Rohit, for uh, you know, taking us through this whole journey. And uh, to all our listeners, uh, thank you for being a part of this webinar. Thank you, Amit. Yep. Yep. And thank, thank you. Very much. Have a great day. Yeah, thank you.